Hello guys! Today we will be learning about the additional aspects of acid-base equilibria, specifically the common ion effect. In the previous topic, we have learned about equilibrium, setting up equilibrium expressions and calculations. We have also examined equilibrium concentrations of ions in solutions containing weak acids and weak bases. We have also learned the concept of conjugate acid-base pairs. Now, let us consider the following two solutions. So we have here acetic acid, which is a weak electrolyte, and a soluble salt of that acid, which is sodium acetate. Now, what can you notice about these two solutions? If you will look into it, these two solutions contain two substances that share a common ion, which is the acetate ion. Sodium acetate is a strong electrolyte and is a soluble ionic compound, so it dissociates completely into ions, while on the other hand, acetic acid is a weak acid and therefore a weak electrolyte, so it only dissociates and ionizes partially. Now we will be taking a closer look at the dynamic equilibrium of the acetic acid, which has an equilibrium constant of 1.8 times 10 raised to negative 5. We will be viewing this from the perspective of Lou Chatelier's principle, and I hope you can still remember that. If we add sodium acetate to a solution of acetic acid in water, the acetate from the sodium acetate causes the equilibrium concentrations of the substances in the equilibrium reaction of acetic acid to shift to the left, causing the equilibrium concentration of hydrogen ions to decrease. So in other words, the presence of the added acetate ion causes the acetic acid to ionize less than it normally would. So we call this observation the common ion effect. Whenever a weak electrolyte and a strong electrolyte containing a common ion are together in a solution, the weak electrolyte ionizes less than it would if it were alone in a solution, and this is what we call the common ion effect. Also note that even if there is what we call a common ion effect, the equilibrium constant will remain the same. It is the relative concentrations of the products and the reactants in the equilibrium expression that change. So now that we know that, let us use this principle in calculations. Calculating the pH when a common ion is involved. So we have here our problem. What is the pH of a solution made by adding 0.30 mole of acetic acid and 0.30 mole of sodium acetate to enough water to make one liter solution? So how are we going to solve for this? So first, we must analyze the problem. So in here, we are being asked to determine the pH of a solution of a weak electrolyte, which is the acetic acid, and a strong electrolyte, which is the sodium acetate, that share a common ion, which is the acetate ion. Knowing this, the next thing that we need to do is to plan on how we are going to solve it. So in any problem in which we must determine the pH of a solution containing a mixture of solutes, it is helpful to proceed by a series of logical steps. So I have outlined here um, four steps in our planning stage on how we are going to solve for this problem. So first, we must consider which solutes are strong electrolytes and which are weak electrolytes, and then identify the major species in the solution. Then, Identify the important equilibrium reaction that is the source of the hydrogen ions and therefore will determine the pH. Third, tabulate the concentrations of ions involved in the equilibrium. And then last, use the equilibrium constant expression to calculate for the concentration of hydrogen ions and then pH. Now we will be using all of these steps to solve for this problem. Okay, so let us again look at the given. So in the problem, we have 0.30 molars of acetic acid and 0.30 molars of sodium acetate, and we are tasked to calculate for the pH of the solution. So we have acetic acid and sodium acetate solution, and we know that acetic acid is a weak electrolyte and sodium acetate is a strong electrolyte. 
So therefore, the major species in the solution are acetic acid, sodium ion, which is neither acidic or basic, and is therefore a spectator ion, and the acetate ion, which is the conjugate base of acetic acid. Now, if we will go back to the previous slide, according to our first step, we must first identify the major species. Second, take note that the hydrogen ion concentration, and therefore pH, are controlled by the dissociation equilibrium of acetic acid, which is described by the following equation. So, our next step would be to write the balanced um, chemical equation. This will be followed by the equilibrium constant expression for this reaction. And then we will be setting up what we call the ICE table or the ICE, which stands for initial change and equilibrium concentrations. Now in setting up the ICE table, make sure that the columns will be in line with the reactants and the products. The equilibrium concentration of acetate ion, which is the common ion, is the initial concentration that is due to sodium acetate plus the change in concentration, denoted by X, that is due to the ionization of acetic acid. Let us now substitute this to the equilibrium expression. Because... Um, Ka is small, we assume that X is small compared to the original concentrations of acetic acid and acetate ion. So, we can ignore the very small X relative to 0.30 molar. So, it will become negligible, which will give us Ka is equals to X times 0.30 over 0.30. So, now we can calculate for X which is 1.8 times 10 raised to negative 5 molars, which is equivalent to the hydrogen ion concentration. So now that we know the hydrogen ion concentration, we can now calculate for pH. And so our pH is 4.74. And that is how we are going to use the common ion effect and to apply it in calculations for pH. So that's it. I hope that you have learned something today about the common ion effect and calculations related to it.